Next, from Chicago, our contributing correspondent Jeff Berkowitz goes one-on-one -on -one with State Senator Dan Duffy. We'll learn more about the economic issues facing the state's pension systems and what changes are being considered to address the billions in unfunded pension liabilities. This runs about 30 minutes. You're watching Public Affairs. Berkowitz is my name and politics is our game. And we're going to be doing lots of politics and public policy this evening because we have as a, I have as a guest a guy who's a good Irish South Sider and, you know, South Side of Chicago. And uh, surprisingly, he's a Republican because people always say if you're South Side Irish from Beverly, you're going to be a Democrat. But he's not. He's a Republican. And if you're South Side Irish uh, from Beverly, you're going to live, settle down in Beverly where all those guys did, you know? Use guys. You started out <laughs> here and you stayed here, you know, and you Bridgeport and around there, right? I mean, but no, he went to Barrington. So Speaker Mike Madigan called him into his office when he became a state senator. He said, I don't understand. What's a guy like you, Southside Irish, Beverly, what are you doing as a Republican? What are you doing, um, you know, living up in Barrington? So I ask you, State Senator Dan Duffy, you've been there for four years. Did uh, Speaker Mike Madigan, uh, did he get his answer? Yes, I told him, you know, very clearly that, well, the reason why I'm a Republican and the reason why I live in Barrington is because I started my own business and I learned right from wrong. And so you think, oh, are you being serious? You don't think Democrats know right from wrong? Uh, Only Republicans? I mean, are you uh, that partisan? Uh, no, no you're being, I'm, you're I'm being kidding. sarcastic. Yeah. I was being sarcastic to the speaker. And actually, he enjoyed it. But it is something. But you did. You started your own business. Is that right? Yes, I did. I started my own business 20 years ago, a computer consulting company. And does that tend to make people Republicans? Would you say that seriously on average? If you start a business, if you grow a business, if you're entrepreneurial, if you're a believer in the free market, number one, are you all of those things? Yes. And I, I would say, I mean, it's difficult. And to if you say, are all of those things, does that tend to make you a Republican? I think it tends to. I mean, I wouldn't say every small business owner is a Republican, but I would say people who believe in free enterprise, people that are developing a business and creating jobs, people that want lower taxes, less regulation, less litigation, those people do, I think, tend to be Republicans. Well, do they know how to fix things? Because if you started a business and you were sent to Springfield, and that was four years ago, right? Mm -hmm. And there yes. was a lot wrong. People probably said there, they, they knew there was a pension mess at that time. Mm -hmm. They certainly know it's true now. And so were you sent down in Springfield to clean up the pension mess? And what have you done? Or yeah, we're a free market. We give our guests. You can answer one or two questions. <laughs> what have you done to fix the pension mess? Or what would you do if you were king and you had the power? If I was Mike Madigan? If you were Mike Madigan <laughs> or you were Senate president, color right. 10, you know, one of the power not one of the mushrooms, right? Right. We'll get back to why you're a mushroom. <laughs> you know. But if, no, seriously, if you had the power, right. let's take that one. What okay. would you do right now? We're taping this on June 27th. Say you were the governor. Could you go down there? Could you say, here's what I want you guys to do in the House and the Senate, pass this legislation, this is what it should look like, and by golly, I'm going to stay here and I'm going to be banging heads until you do it. Mm -hmm. Now, just describe, if you were the kind of guy to do that, mm -hmm. Quinn apparently isn't, he had a proposal, but then he, you know, went home. I don't know. I don't know. Governor Quinn, come on on. You can tell us and defend yourself and say, didn't really do that. Right. So you're the governor now, and what would that legislation look like that you propose in terms of modifying uh, or that you propose as pension reform? What would it look like? I, first off, that, that, that question is a great question, and there's a lot that could be done that's not being handled right now. First off, by sending us, by uh, convening session, by, by letting us go from session without addressing the pension problem is, is unbelievable. I mean, it's, it's almost uh, criminal to let us go home without addressing the pension problem. Right now in the state of Illinois, I mean, as of today, you know, our, our money, our debt because of the pension problem is compounding $12.6 million every day or $525,000 every hour. We're adding new pension debt on to our current debt because we have How much is our problem. current debt? Uh, uh, our pension, we're $83 billion in debt in unfunded, unfunded. unfunded pension So if liability. you want it to be run actu actuarially correct, you know, statistically correct, mm -hmm. as an independent person might advise you, they would say your funds for the pensions that you're going to be obligated to pay should have $83 billion more in there right now right. than they have. Right. Is that what it is? Absolutely. What it Absolutely. And so what, do you, what would you do? What, do you, what are you going to do to fix that if you were king? How would you do it? The first thing you need to do is uh, you need to cap pensions. So right out of the gate, 
you know, I would cap pensions at $110,000 a year. The second thing we need to do is we need to stop double dipping. Uh, double dipping, as you know, is that many people in the state of Illinois receive multiple pensions. There's five state pension, public pension programs in the state of Illinois, and many, many people receive multiple pensions. So, so you just say elect one and that's all. Pick a, pick a pension and go with it. So if you're a legislator, just hypothetically, mm -hmm. they're in one pension, but the judges are in the same pension, right? So you could go from being a legislator to being a judge and you only get one pension, right? Right. The, le well, the legislators are one pension, the judges are in another pension. Oh, they're another one. So yeah, if you're a so legislator and you become a judge, you will have a legislative pension and you will have a judge pension. Right. And you're saying under your policy, you would say, okay, you're a legislator, you want to be a judge, that's fine, you can get paid for that, but you get no additional pension. No, you already have a pension. You already have it. So why, why should you be offered another pension? And, you, and the judge would say to you, the person getting appointed to judge says, well, Joe Blow here, he was a, he was a factory worker and he had right. another pension. He became a judge right. and he gets a pension. Right. So why should he get something that I don't get? He's got two and I, right. and I why should I have two? There, there's, there's a, it's, it's I mean, fair is fair. A, absolutely. And that, and that, it's apples and oranges when you compare public pensions to private pensions. The public sector can give out as many pensions as they want to individuals and pay as much as they want. Which Be, the private sector can do that. The, I'm sorry, that. the private sector, yes. The private sector can, can give out as, as much as they want and pay as, as much in a pension as they want because it's, it's private money. It's not taxpayer. And they only, they're accountable to their shareholders that, correct. or their individual owners. Correct. They're, it, not, they're not accountable to taxpayers. No. You are accountable to taxpayers. Right. You're a legislator. That's right. So you think the taxpayers may not want that, so we just policy is one pension, that's all. That's what I believe. All right. so, but, but that doesn't do much to fix the $83 billion well, problem. That, that does a lot. And then, of course, one of the biggest problems we have to look at is the COLA, the cost of living adjustment. Okay. Because right now, pensions are compounded. Uh, people from the time they retire. COLA stands for cost, cost of, of living, living adjustment. C for cost, O for of, L for living, A for adjustment. That's right. I want to keep it simple here, Sesame That's Street good. type. That's right. Because, you know, there's a misnomer. Because right now, right now, the COLA is in the state of Illinois, if you're a state employee, I think it's the case, you get 3% a year adjustment, no matter what. Inflation could be a half a percent, it could be 2%. It doesn't adjust for inflation, it just gives you a perk. You get 3% a year. Right, from the time you retire to the time you die. Right. And it's compounded. It's compounded, and which is, which is one of the, the major problems okay. because it continues and to- And compounded means? It, that, that interest continues to, to double every time. I mean, what, but what it means is that if you get, say, you say you have $30,000 as a pension, mm -hmm. and you had 3% a year increase under the current system, that would be $900 a year mm -hmm. no matter what. Inflation could be a half That's a percent, right. you're going to get $900 more. Right. And then next year, when you get your 3% increase, it's not 3% of 30000 it's 3% of 30000 plus the 900 that went up. So, so, if you're so it's compounded, and that's why compounding is nice if you're on the receiving end, but if you're on the paying end, not so good. Right. So a teacher, if a teacher retired in, uh, in 1995 at 65000 that would now today in, in 2012 would be over $100,000. They that person would have $100,000. That's right. Pay, due, which due. would be way more than that person was ever earning because say I think usually for teachers you max out at about 75%. Mm -hmm. So roughly if you had like a $90,000 uh, let's make it simple. If you had a $100,000 salary your last 3 or 4 years, mm -hmm. you would max out at about 75%. That's your max pension. So you retired say we'll change your hypothetical to 75,000. Okay, mm -hmm. and in your hypo, you went from 65 to 100 in how many years? Mm -hmm. it, well, from 1995 to now. All so right, so 10 years or 10 so. Years, yeah. Same way here, you'd probably go from 75, I was making it simple for 100,000, you'd go from 75 to 110. And again, the point is you're making way more in a short amount of time than you ever made in the job. Right. And so how many people now who have private pensions, how many of you out there watching this show, okay, Number one, almost none of you have a defined benefit. You had maybe a 401k, but most of you watching this show, unless you're like 120 years old, you don't have a defined benefit, right? The private sector got rid of you know pensions a long time ago. Look at U.S. Steel. The, they got rid of the defined benefits. Right. So you have a 401k and so forth. Right. Okay, so if you're a teacher, you get a defined benefit, and the main thing is your defined benefit is set up now to in a short amount of time, it will way exceed anything you're making. That's right. So it's ludicrous, and, and yet we're told, well, we're told the average pension is about 30,000. 
Maybe it is. Is that the, right? The average teacher's pension is forty-six thousand. So I don't want to. So pick, average teacher's pension yeah, is forty-six thousand. Right. It's I not thirty thousand. It's forty-six thousand. Right, it's forty-six, and I don't want to pick on teachers because teachers aren't the ones. You know, teachers have put into their pension. Mm, I don't know. They, they I mean, paid uh, their let's money. pick on teachers. I mean, uh, I, I everybody. Really, I mean, everybody uh, either says they got a mom who was a teacher, <laughs> they got a favorite teacher. That could all well be. But these are people who basically work at best eight months a year, six hours a day. See, I don't know. Eight months a year, six. No. No, no. No. So when somebody's making a hundred thousand or ninety thousand huh? for eight months, if you adjust it, it's like a hundred and thirty thousand. Okay. No, they. It is a. It is a well-paid profession. It is a unionized profession. The whole idea of a union is to raise the wage above the market wage. Now I'm not saying that's bad or wrong. But if you only wanted to get the market wage, you wouldn't need the union. I know. So a teacher's union does what? They, they restrict the number of teachers so these people can get more than they would otherwise get in a competitive system. Do you agree, Dan? I think that the teachers it's are It's a slight digression, but do you agree? Uh, I think the teachers are taking a lot of flack right now that yeah. it's kind of undeserved because right. of people like Speaker Madigan and people, legislative leaders that have been taking money out of the savings funds and out of the teachers funds for years and diverting it to other programs. So that's a problem. Okay, but the, we're sort of getting off track, and I, I'm causing that. Right. Okay, but so what you would do is you would adjust the COLA. Yes. And the state senate passed legislation at the end of May, at the end of your regular session, and I think it was I think Senate President John Cullerton told me press conference right after, and I, and John Cullerton says something, and I listen, and he more often than not he's being honest. You can disagree with him or not, but I think John Cullerton tries to say things that are accurate and truthful. I think he said 16 Democrats voted for that. They needed 30 votes and 14 Republicans. Does that sound right? Sounds about right. Bipartisan, okay. Mm -hmm. Passed the Senate. Did you vote for that? Yes, I did. Okay. So it got the 30 votes, but it didn't pass the House. It didn't even get called by the House, right? Of course not. And it's okay. not going to be called by the House. But the point is, that legislation adjusted the COLA, right? Mm -hmm. For two of for the just, right. only two funds. Right. How did it adjust the COLA? Uh, you, you know what? What he was doing is adjusting it down. I think it was two percent. It was right now. The coal is a misnomer, as you're saying, because it's three percent, no matter what. The, the, the bill was ridiculous. But uh, but the it was ridiculous. Yeah, it, it In was. Fact, you said that. You said the bill was a joke. I said the bill was a joke. Let's see if we can get that graphic. We want to get that <laughs> quote right. Dan Duffy. This is how he makes friends, wins friends, and influences <laughs> right. people. Senate President Cullerton, I'm sure, loved it when you told him when the I was, legislation he sponsored that he just passed. Would you walk up well, to him was, and say it was, it's a joke? No, no, no. It was, it, the, what happened was, when he, we were debating the bill on the Senate Excuse floor. Excuse me, Senator. Excuse me, I can get my crack staff to bring up that graphic. Mm -hmm. Dan Duffy. There we go. Duffy calls Cullerton pension legislation a big joke. Did we get that right, Dan? Yes, you did. And that was during debate. And President yes. Cullerton, Senate President Cullerton, I didn't say that. Dan Duffy said that. I don't want to get in trouble with <laughs> you. Yeah. No, and I said that during debate, not after the bill was voted for. And I said all along I was going to support that you bill. You said that during the debate? Yes, I did. Okay. Not after? No. To President Cullerton when okay. we were debating the bill. And why, why is it a big joke? The reason why the bill is a joke is because it's kind of set up as a farce of a bill saying that it's going to be pension reform for the state of Illinois when it doesn't address the other three pensions in the state of Illinois. So what happens every year down in Springfield, as you know, sometimes they come up with these bills and they lab label them as reform mm -hmm. to make people think that they're changing and they're reforming when actually it doesn't do much at all. So if we because really, it only dealt with two funds. If it had dealt with all five funds, right, then right, the smallest fund. But you, but you voted for it. Yes, I did because even though it, it's a joke, you voted for it. <laughs> I did vote for it because there it is pension reform, but it's such a small, minuscule amount. Okay. Like I said in debate, it's a baby it's, step. It, it's, it's a baby it's step. Not even, it's not even the tip of the iceberg. Now knowing perfectly well that this bill was not going to go to the House because Speaker Madigan already released the House from session. Mm -hmm. So they already left and went home. Well, so, so, it could go, so we were just going through the maneuvers. It could, it could still come up in the House. It just would it, take it, a 60 percent vote, right? How much you want to bet? No, but the, the, hypothetically, yeah, right. theoretically. Hypothetically, it could, and hypothetically, a lot of things could happen okay. in the House. But this bill is not going to go anywhere. We're wasting but, but a lot it was of to time. Show, it was to show that, uh, in defense of Senate President Cullerton, mm -hmm. he could say it's to show that we want to do something. We put together a bipartisan piece of legislation. Yes, it only applied to two funds. Well, why did it only apply to two rather than five? He couldn't have gotten the votes. He, he couldn't have, have gotten the votes for all five funds. That's right. And he couldn't have got the votes from his side of the aisle. And the only reason why he did this is to say he passed pension reform. Well, is and to try, try to market that as okay. pension reform. When, so you're saying, is not. it for the election? Is it for, yes. his, is it is for his members when they're running on November <laughs> yes. 6th? They can say, it's exactly. we supported pension reform legislation. We couldn't get the House to do it. 
That's, that's exact, what you're saying? That's exactly what it's for. And you're saying he should have spent real time trying to get all five funds right. covered and get it passed and also spent real time trying to get Speaker Mike Madigan to agree with him, get Governor Pat Quinn to agree, have them sign it. That's your point. Absolutely. If you were king, that's what you would have done. Absolutely. And that's what I said in debate. So, and that's what I was talking about. And that's why I said that this was a joke. And yeah, but on, to be fair, mm -hmm. if you were king and you were a Republican governor. I would have done this a long time ago. But, you know, I, I wanted but, to wait until the, the last day of session. We're dealing with now. We're dealing right. with now. Right. I mean, even if you started earlier in the year. Right. Wouldn't you have trouble getting a lot of your fellow Republicans to support that change? Downstate Republicans who are not so big on pension reform, maybe some more of their constituents are government employees? No. No? Because right now, the state of Illinois, we're in the, we are backed up in a corner. We're so far in debt, we can't borrow So you're anymore. saying the Republicans can easily get the majority of Republicans even more to support major pension reform legislation? Absolutely. Real pension reform, yes. Okay. So, we, we, you know, we, we've been down there. I've been down there okay. for the past four years. Well, we've seen what we call okay. ethics reforms. It doesn't reform okay. anything. It actually gives Speaker Madigan more power, not less. But, you know, the, these bills that they label one thing and does another, yeah. we, we don't want to support but that. But if it were all five funds, then you would say it's not a joke. Because no, that, that's, serious. Then that's serious money, then that's going to help. And if it was all five funds, and it would, would it have anything other than the COLA, if you were king, would you, would you want anything other than the COLA modification? in that legislation? Yes. What would you want? I'd also want to cap the pensions, okay. no double dipping, no and, double dipping. and raise the age of retirement. Okay, and what would you, currently is the retirement age 55 or 62? It's 50 to 55, depending on the, okay. the plan and the program, and I would raise it to more of social security age. Which would be? 65, 67. So you raise it from 50 to 55, which currently it is now, to 65? to 65, 67, correct. And you would do that for any employees right now, no matter if somebody was 56, would you raise it for that person well, too? Well, we would have to take a look at that and okay. we, there would be some transition might. and some phase okay. in. But right. that, so you'd raise the retirement age, would you also raise the employee contribution? Yes. From like 9% now, depending on the fund, to 12%, 3 yes. or 4%. Absolutely. And that was, wasn't that Governor Pat Quinn's proposal? Raise the employee contribution, raise the retirement age, modify the COLA. Yeah. Wasn't that his that he didn't have specific legislation, but to be fair, we try to be fair here. Good. You would agree with Pat Quinn that that schematic of that legislation is something you would agree with. Yes, I would. But but here's the thing: is that what we need to do is bring everyone to the table and discuss these ideas. We need to bring the teachers and the other union members and everyone to the table to let them know what we're doing. Part of the problem. So you bring them to the table and they see, say, "We don't want to do it. We we don't want to do it. But at and least we don't. And we don't. Least. And, they, but, and we don't <laughs> got to do it because you know we're unions and we're powerful right. and we." pay for at least a number of Democrats, maybe a few Republicans. You know, who's that guy? What's his name? The guy who was a superintendent of education, Republican from downstate, who's now retired and yeah, now yeah. is now hacking his way for one of the associations. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think it was name? Ready, Runny, yeah. something like that. Re Ready. Uh, I, I don't know. Yeah. But you know what but I mean? Yeah. So basically, the guy was not a Republican. No, right. I mean, he didn't agree with anything you've told us here today, right? Well, he was, um, he had- So uh, there are Republicans like Special that. interest groups definitely invested right. in him for right. a long time. Right, and he was a superintendent, and he was feeding at the public trough at the same Roger time. Eddy. Roger Eddy. He was, wasn't he a superintendent as well as, so he was a guy so getting big pensions, getting big salaries on the education side, voting on it as a as, house member. As well as a state representative, right? Yeah. So no conflict, conflict no conflict there, there right? <laughs> right. And Mr. Eddy, if you want to come on and defend yourself, <laughs> right. come and tell us what association you're working for and how much money you're choking down now. What is it, 200000 a year? What is he doing? What did you say he's like a major influence peddler? I don't know what he's doing. Right How do you now. sleep at night? I don't know. How does he sleep at night? You're going to have to ask him. Come on, Mr. Eddie. Come on the show and tell us, okay? Right. All right. But the point is, yes. he's a Republican. So you've got yes. some house, house cleaning to do. You can't just say, oh, the Republicans are pure and the I, Democrats not, are bad guys. You've got, you got, you got some Republicans, and Mr. Eddie isn't the only one that you've got to take care of. You may have trouble passing that pension reform if you were king and you were governor. Maybe not as much trouble as the Democrats because they have more people benefiting from union contributions. But still, you got you know you got some Republicans down there who aren't going to be gung ho are, pension reform, here, right? I, I work. With, I mean, fair I, is fair. I, we got to be fair. I work here, with right? the Democrats every day. The Democrats have helped me with all my bills. I work very closely with the Black and Latino caucuses. So, but see, that's not what's happening right now down in Springfield. People are not working together, and that's what we need to do. So it's so not you just wanna, Republicans. You want to be bipartisan. We, we need want, to have a, a pension reform bill and meet with both sides of the aisle and meet with the unions and, and discuss okay. with them what we're going to do. At least bring them into the conversation. And, that, and then your point is that should be happening all through the year. Ago. In May, oh, in 
April in 2011. Absolutely. And it doesn't because why? Why doesn't it happen? Some would say, Speaker Matt Murphy said this on TV just the other night on Chicago Tonight. I always quote that program. I love quoting that. I mean, it's Carol Marine there with Matt Murphy, with um, with uh, Mike Connolly. No, Mike Noland. Oh, Mike. Noland. And Lawrence Massal. And basically, Matt Murphy said, "Look, everybody knows Mike Madigan didn't want to pass this. He never wanted to pass it because of too much of a headache, basically, with the unions and contributions and his members. And so he's never serious about this. He wants to do it. It'll come up." Matt Murphy said before, after the November 6th election. That's right. Did Matt Murphy get it right? Do you agree with him? I agree with him on that. Yes, yeah. I do. Come ap after November 6th, but you'll have lame ducks there who won't be accountable, and they may pass this right. and vote for this. Pension Speaker Madigan is, is a very shrewd politician. He's, he's a political mastermind, and there's no way that he was going to bring up a pension reform bill that was going to be so controversial right before a major but election. Does, uh, to be fair, to be fair, does Senate President John Cullerton want to bring it up? Is it just Mike Madigan that's blocking it, or is it uh, because Madigan, as you said, Cullerton brought up this other thing, which that, you were that, critical that, that, of as a joke. That, like I does, said, that's a farce. So does Cullerton want to see this pass before November sixth, or would you no, put him in the same category not. as Abs Mike Madigan? Absolutely, he, he, he's, he's Mike does, Madigan's right hand man. Does, does Illinois Republican House Leader Minority Leader Tom Cross want to see it voted on by November sixth? I believe so. Even he's if it had the cost it. shift in there, no. He wouldn't. No. And why do you suppose he's so? And, and again, I'm not why speaking so for him. I'm telling you what I think. You he would think, think he would? Yeah, he was. He, he doesn't want it coming up before November sixth if it no, has no, a cost no. shift. So if it has the cost shift. If it has shift, a cost shift, why? I, what about what about want to do it after. Senate Republican Leader Rodonio? She doesn't want it coming on. I don't after think that people. I don't. Think she doesn't want the. They, they don't want the cost shift there ever. Yes. I don't and think they, even they after do, they. But would they do think it would be harmful to more Republicans than Democrats the cost shift because they are more prevalent upstate and in suburbs, and that's where the cost shift will ne negatively impact, right? It, so to be fair, to be fair here, you have to say Redonio and Cross are playing politics. There are a lot of hypotheticals. The, uh, but black, they are playing that, politics too, say, right? No, no, not at all. They would want, I mean, they, they want, they want a pension reform. <laughs> complaining about politicians doing politics is a little bit like complaining about dogs for barking. Mm -hmm. That's what they do. That's why I call Isn't, myself elected official. Why? But you are a politician. Yeah. You yeah. have to do some politics, right? Public service. Public servant, look at what what people want to do is they want to put through as far as the Republicans that you mentioned that I that I know do definitely want to put through public uh, put through pension, pension reform. reform, but they as don't want the cost possible. shift. They, but they, not the they worry not about the cost, cost shift, shift now, not the cost shift after the election. The cost shift is they don't want raise the cost shift ever. It was like paraphrasing George right. Wallace. Remember George Wallace? That's right. Correct. Segregation now, and the, segregation right. then, segregation want the, forever. People don't want the so cost shift. So you say no cost shifting now, no cost shifting right. later, no cost shifting. The cost forever. shift will raise people's property taxes. People pay enough right now that their home values are going down and their property taxes are going up. Well, shouldn't people you look at the cost shift on it? It'll go up even more. What's the difference if you pay? If you pay for teachers, the salaries from the school district, mm -hmm. okay? And you pay for administrators, your salaries. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't you also pay for their pensions? Mm -hmm. You don't take this bill of $83 billion that, that Speaker Madigan's been down there for 42 years. He's been Speaker for 30. He's been taking money from that fund and using that credit card for the past 42 years. And now he's going to come into people and tell them, oh, by the way, I spent all your money. I've used all that money. So now I'm going to take that and shift it back to you no, and, your, but you're and saying, raise your property tax. You're saying tax. that's maybe why not to do, do, do it you, now. But you, you, just told me, you just told me Redonio and Cross don't want cost shifting ever. I'm saying that's what I think. That's, oh, that's well, my opinion. You, you, you're going to have to ask them. Well, but, Okay, we've asked this, we've asked Leader Cross to come on. We hope he would. Mm -hmm. We've asked uh, Senate Republican Leader Rodonio to come on. We hope she would, but they haven't. Mm -hmm. So you're the best I got, mm -hmm. and you're saying they don't want it ever. Third place. <laughs> so I know. it's you know what I I think it's a bad idea. I think they would probably think it's a bad idea too. I think all the people no, in the state you, of Illinois that pay you property would, taxes. You would agree would think it's that a bad no, idea. you would agree that if people pay the teachers' salaries, they should also probably pay the teachers' pensions, right? They should have some skin in the game, definitely. So you would agree? I would agree that they need and some you would skin if, if in I have, the game. If I have but what Rodonio and Cross are saying, you would disagree with them. I mean, be, let's be fair. I would you would agree disagree that you have to have some skin in the game, but you can't change the rules in the All fourth right. quarter. And you're saying you have to, you have to they're have the saying, rules at the beginning. And you're saying that's holding up major pension reform, even if I'm right in how it's, I'm portraying it's, it. It's unrelated. Right. It's unrelated. That's it, your point. But it's again, unrelated. Again, you're getting distracted yeah. with, with the head fakes that Mike Madigan is giving it's you. It's a misdirection play. It, it's a poison pill. Yeah. He, he put the whole, you know, cost shift in there to kill the bill. 
so that it wouldn't get any support. He knew that wasn't going to go through. He knew that the people were going to support that bill, but he had to make it look like in the final weeks of uh, legislative session that, that he was working okay. on some. So pension Republicans reform. should be out there. Every he does this day. every year. He's you been doing should this for be out there years. on that slogan. Every Republican I hear should be talking about that, and they're not, mm -hmm. right? If I go up to a person running for the state senate and I see something about cost shifting, the guy looks at me and says, cost shifting? It's like right. he didn't even know what it means. Right. This right. is the Republican Party. Right. Did you say the Republican well, Party you know, has a problem? It's just like change of subject, <laughs> folks. Does the Republican Party have a problem? Because that you've been given this major opportunity. Mm -hmm. Pension reform, you're saying, has just been killed by Speaker Mike Madigan. You're saying Senate President Cullerton goes along with this. You could run on that. You could presumably get a majority. Where is Treasurer Dan Rutherford now? Not to pick on Dan, but is he in like South Korea? I think he is. Shouldn't he be like in Southern Illinois? Well, I think that he's he's working hard in South but Korea. I, but I think he will be back here. Why? Well, he's working on trade relations and all the rest. And is that's Treasurer. And that's good. Some people think he's running for the U.S. Senate. What do you think? You think? No, I think he's, he's working. He's hard. working hard. He's to, all right. Yeah. So, but you're saying, but day to day, Treasurer Dan Rutherford is going Hamlet to Hamlet, as David Harris said they should do and explaining what you're just saying, mm -hmm. increase the employee contribution, increase the retirement age, modify the COLA, get that done now, and don't screw around with costs. That's right. And, you're and saying, bring people to the table so that they saying, know what's Kirk happening. And you're saying Kirk Dillard's doing that because he's a statewide guy having run for governor. And you're saying Bill Brady's doing that. All Republicans are on the same page, and they're all hammering this. And if they do it right, you're going to win the majority in the state Senate, and you're going to win the majority in the House on this issue unless Mike Madigan and John Cullerton change. Did I get that right? Sounds good to me. Is that, that's an idea, though, seriously. It, it, it is a great idea, and that's I'm the message. I'm not partisan. I just, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just saying if I were a Republican, that's what I would do. And if I were right. a Democrat, I would be afraid of that, except if I were a Democrat in Illinois, I would know that Republicans in Illinois never miss an opportunity to miss an opportunity. That's right. That's yeah. right. They never miss an opportunity that's to miss right. an opportunity. I agree with that. Yeah. But you're going to change that. So one day you're going to be governor, would you say? Uh, I would not say that's something that I'm interested in doing right you would, now. But you would, you would think about that. You would like to be governor. Because we started this conversation, what would you do to be king? And this is what's necessary. You need to be governor to make these changes, right? I mean, let's not be modest here. This is what you'd like to do, is be governor of the state of Illinois? No. I, I never said I'd like to be governor. I know, but, but I, 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 like, I would like to continue okay. to help any way I can. But uh, whether that's governor or state senator, I think I'm uh, doing a lot and, and working as hard okay. as I can right now as state senator. Education? Mm -hmm. Does education need some work? Education in the state of we Illinois? Just, we just finished. Change the subject. We've cured the pension reform problem. Mm -hmm. you, you, you reform Medicaid. Would mm -hmm. you say Medicaid is now cured and fixed and OK? I we'll said, come back to education in a second. Okay. I, I think that we are moving in the right direction on Medicaid. Um, I think that there's a lot we need to do. We've already uh, implemented some laws such as asset verification mm -hmm. and passive redetermination. Let's just look at those two things right there. Asset verification. So right now, people in the state of Illinois receive Medicaid benefits, even though they might have multiple homes or multiple cars or boats. So we're going to ask people to verify, to their, verify assets their assets. Now, and we, verify their income. We've got to be quick. Right. We said we wanted to do that. But we're not following through. We're not following through with that. We said that we're. So gonna, Julie Hamos is director of whatever that whole program and oversees right, the Medicaid right, budget. Right. Julie should be responsible. We're coming here. If I ask Julie if it's happening, what's she going to tell me? She's an honest person. Would she say it's not happening? But she would like to see it happen. She's. I think she would say that they're not enforcing that at all. But would, do you think Julie would like to enforce that? I don't know if she would or she wouldn't. You'd have to, I'd be interested well, to know good. if she would or she Julie wouldn't. Julie, come on the show and clarify yeah. that. We only have a few minutes. They're not left. enforcing <clears throat> it. We're going to continue to speak as the credits roll, but I very much want to thank our guest, State Senator Dan Murphy, and thank you so much. Dan Duffy. <laughs> Two Irish guys. I'm conflating we all Matt like. Murphy and Dan Duffy. They're going to merge when <laughs> they right. run for governor, both of them. That's right. It's going to be Dan, Dan Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a scary situation. Right. So Dan Duffy. Yes. In a minute or so. Yes. If you wanted to fix education mm -hmm. in the state of Illinois, would you adopt school voucher school choice? Absolutely. I'm 100% for school voucher. And this guy here, choice. Milton Friedman, Capitalism yes. and Freedom, right here. Yeah. Absolutely. You've, you've read this book already? No, I have not. All right. You're going to read it? All right. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, school voucher, school choice. School voucher, you, you school would vouchers. vaucherize the state of Illinois. Absolutely. People should have the option to have the choice on which school to send their kids. They you should have more charter schools. I would definitely have more charter schools. I would, I would lift the limit on charter schools right now. You're watching the Illinois Channel, an independent nonprofit corporation formed to provide gavel to gavel coverage of Illinois state government and other public affairs events taking place across Illinois. 